it's Super Bowl, Super Bowl Sunday. Well, I'm recording this the day before Super Bowl, but you're seeing this on Super Bowl Sunday. My prediction though, Patriots 27, Eagles 21. I'm gonna post this sometime in the early morning, mid-morning, on Sunday, on Super Bowl Sunday, we'll see if I'm right. Today, doing an experiment. I keep doing these and having fun with them. I did a lager yeast experiment last brew day. One before that was an IPA hazy experiment. And that was just what the yeast would impart for the haze. Today is what would the hops impart for the haze. I have an article up that I'm gonna reference quite a bit in my little intro here. Scott Janish has a blog. He's also starting a brewery with Michael Tonsmeyer, the mad fermentationist called Sapwood Cellars. Those dudes know a lot. Scott Janish did a whole thing on this article about haze and what could create the haze. And it's really interesting. Um, it's on a site, scottjanish.com. His experiment for this article he wrote was to see what putting 17% oat flour into the mash would create a haze or not. He also wrote about it, uh, another experiment he did in the article where he did a mosaic IPA with cryo hops and one that was just regular standard hops. And his theory was the polyphenols in the hops, and this isn't the theory, some of this has been studied, that the hops um, can impart up to around 50-60% of the polyphenols. And the polyphenols latch onto the proteins and it creates haze. Polyphenols is also in malt, which also can create haze as well. So he did an experiment and Lo and behold, the cryo hopped one was clear, and the one that was not cryo hopped, the regular pellet one, was hazy. Amazing. Amazing stuff. So there might be something to this. Um, I'll link his article below, but I'll show you a photo as well. It's really cool. It's kind of hard to see here, but that's the clear one, and that's the hazy one. So in theory, if you use a lot of raw wheat, it's actually been found to clear your beer up more. So if you use like up to 40-50%, the high molecular weight proteins in it, will essentially drop out of suspension. Also, there's be less polyphenols. So he says when 20% barley was swapped with unmalted oats, there was a 30% reduction in polyphenols. And when 40% barley was swapped with unmalted oats, there was a 45 reduction in polyphenols. So you could maybe add a bunch of raw oats or raw wheat into your hazy IP to make it hazy. In theory, you might not even make it that much more hazier. But if you dry hop the hell out of it, you know, you're gonna probably get more haze, especially early on. There's a, there was a study done. They found that um, yeast, he did WP001 and the KVL011, that the 001, that the protein content decreased by 16% and the KVL1 decreased by 42%. So if you, if you have a yeast that's de decreasing its proteins and the hops don't have, uh, the polyphenols in the hops don't have a chance to latch on these proteins to create permanent haze, then you might, you'll probably get a clearer beer. But if you dry hop early before the protein decreases, the polyphenols have time to get latch onto it, and then you get a hazier beer. That is why a big theory is done with dry hopping really early as opposed to late, and I think dry hopping really early plays a big role in hazy beer. That's the theory being going on, that's what they said about in this article, and that's what I'm testing out today. Using experimental hops though, something different, something new. You gotta find them, I gotta find them. Jack my Valley. Hops, new experimental. One is called experimental stone fruit, 17% alpha acids. Another one called experimental tangerine, 6.5% alpha acids. What I'm gonna do is better with this in the main two gallon batch I'm doing, then load it up at the end for a steep with this. This one is gonna get a late dry hop. This one is gonna be dry hopped early. I'm gonna do a day or two into fermentation, then near the end of fermentation, and then probably one afterward. I'm using the WLP001 and I'm using just a two row. And the two row I got is from Brewyard. I bought a bag from them. I'm very excited. No flaked oats are in this, none of that. No high chlorides. In fact, my sulfate to chloride ratio is about 150 sulfates to like 40 or 50 chlorides. But I'm using 100% distilled water. My water has been swinging around a little bit too much. My pH is a 5.8 last time. I, I don't want to mess with that. I'm going to I put all my numbers in a brewing water program. I'm adding gypsum and I'm gonna add table salt, which is sodium chloride, to get to my levels. I'm gonna take out magnesium entirely. So I just want some calcium, I want some sodium, I want some chloride. Uh, so, and then I'm gonna throw about 1.5 milliliters of lactic acid. I'll probably start with like 1.2 milliliters and then add more as needed. That was a long, a long explanation to get to the brew day. Let's get the brew day started. Pumped! <laughs> All right, 
right, well, I do got to add more uh, lactic acid. So I did 1.2. Uh, I did probably need to go to 1.5, so I'll do that now. I'll throw another 0.3 in there and see where I'm at. Wow, that was two full uh, milliliters of lactic acid. Brunewater said one and a half. I needed two. I think it's because my mash was so thin, I just needed more. Although I would assume that the Brunewater would calculate for that. Do it again next time. I'll throw two in and see what I get. Listen, there's, there's, when you're brewing quickly and fast and you're trying to shoot multiple videos at once in the same day, you forget to do things sometimes. You just plain forget. It happens, it happens to everybody, right? Can I use the camera as an excuse for this mistake? Or, or should I just take the responsibility and just blame myself and there's no excuses. I forgot to add the false bottom. I could have done, it could be worse, right? Could be on fire. Sideration, hot sideration. Ah, no. Ten forty-seven. Wow, cool. It's over ten forty-five. I think next time I might just do either regular sparge to compare or do a full just cold batch sparge rather than a cold fly sparge. We'll see. We'll see what happens. It's getting weird. It's always getting weird though. Oh, oh, oh. Yay! Yay! Woo! Turn your back for one second. I'm gonna add the first edition of hops now. Ten sixty-seven. Uh, wow, that's that's awesome. Um, I'm now pushing like seventy-four percent efficiency. Uh, so yeah, pff, can't complain really. There you have it. Definitely got to mark which one is gonna get the early dry hop and one's gonna get the later one. I did buy another keg, so I wanna keg both of these. That'd be ideal. And that way I get like a good equal look at what I'm doing. I also just hate bottling hoppy beer and just bottling in general is annoying. Uh, for the yeast, I just harvested some 001 from uh, the last batch I did, my, my uh, lager yeast experiment. I looked online and it said that uh, 20 milliliters of slurry is good for my gravity for how much I have. So I pulled 40 milliliters off here and split it in half. It's pretty active yeast too, so this should this should kick off right away. It still was like fermenting a little bit when I pulled off the, the yeast slurry. So yeah, thank you for watching. Um, like, subscribe, all the good stuff. Stay tuned for the tasting of these. And stay tuned for more videos. And uh, keep experimenting, guys. Get out there and experiment. It's fun. It's really fun. Mm -hmm.